Hey everybody, just want to tell you about an event that's happening at Calvary Chapel Old Bridge. Um, Eric McTaxis, the guy who wrote Bonhoeffer and um, Amazing Grace, just an, an incredible guy, will be at our church uh, supporting the pro-life ministry. So if you haven't signed up, it's a ticketed event, but if you want to come and hear what he has to say and support the uh, Bridge Women's Center, that would be great. But Lord, we pray for this message. God, may we just see you, Lord, through our pain. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, this is my not my favorite part at all. Mary and Joseph, uh, people who experience probably a lot of pain. Here's the part that's hard. Mary was definitely a woman of pain, pierced and perplexed. Uh, her name does mean sorrow and bitterness. How'd you like that for a name? That's what her name does mean, bitterness. She had a lot of pain along the way. I don't think she realized how much pain she was going to be in watching the journey that her son would go on. Not really her son, but you know what I'm saying. Yes, hers, but God's. She kind of had to learn to let go. Um, but wow, did she count the cost. Mary counted the cost. I love Amy Carmichael's old poem. I wish I had all the words here, but she just asked... Um, do you have any root wounds? Do you have any scars? And if not, you couldn't have followed very far if you don't have any wounds or scars because there's a lot of pain sometimes when we follow the Lord. Um, but the joy always outweighs the pain. But anyway, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. John 19, 25. Now, this is a staggering statement. Now they're stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, as if it's just a normal statement. But holy cow, where are the adjectives? Where are the, where are the verbs? I mean, we read and we know it would mean there they stood at the cross, trembling, probably weeping, sobbing, seeing Jesus, bloody, bruised and broken, hanging on the cross. You can't even, there's words can't describe the scene of, of the cross. Um, and then it says, and a sword shall pierce through your own soul. That's Luke chapter 2, 35. Wow, we see Mary. Again, can you imagine her at the cross? Can you imagine her pain? I mean, we all saw the passion of the Christ and many other Jesus movies, but it, it, it takes your breath away. You can't even imagine the pain the Lord was in, but the pain that she was in, you know, let me help my son. What can I do? Um, in the, in the Greek words, it says she stood with strong composure. Have you ever been somewhere and you don't want someone to see you, you know, crying or worry about you? She was actually thinking, I don't want to add more pain to my son. Again, I can't even imagine what she's going through. There was a book that somebody wrote by Oswald Sanders, um, The Incomparable Christ. It is fantastic. All the attributes of the Lord. Take your breath away. Maybe we'll do this for another podcast. But ah, here she's in the temple with, with Simeon. He's saying, Now, Lord, let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Oh, he's so happy. My eyes have seen your salvation. Luke chapter 2. Then turning to Mary, he made the mysterious but prophetic statement a sword is going to pierce through your own soul also. Luke 2.35 A sword is going to pierce through your soul also. Wow. He's just a baby right now. She could have said, okay, I'm out of here. But it is always so. Those who love most deeply suffer most intensely. For Mary, the greatest of all privileges was to bring with it the greatest of all sorrows. At the time of Simeon's prediction, it must have seemed so remote and improbable to the young mother, but now its mystery is resolved. <sighs> the mother of the man of sorrows must share the, son, the sorrows of her son. There he hung before her eyes, but she was helpless. His wounds bled, but she dare not touch them. His mouth was parched, but she did not go to moisten it. The nails pierced her as well as him. The thorns around him circle of flame around her heart. Where else would you expect to find such a mother? It was her very own son who was suffering. The outstretched arms and nail 
torn hands once had clung around her neck. The head now tortured with the crown of thorns was once pillowed on her breast. The mouth on which she had once lavished her kisses of love would now was now parched and swollen. Though powerless to help, she could at least be beside him in loyalty and love. Sympathetically, she entered into all his sufferings. The spear pierced her heart as it tore his flesh. With joy, she had followed his career, had feared and prayed for him, had rejoiced in his successes and wept over his disappointments. But now he was dying as a criminal, not as a hero. What an end to the life of such a son, lest she add to his sorrowings, but that is why he went to the cross. He willingly is there, okay? <sighs> she did not give way to her uncontrolled weeping, but repressed her grief as the sword pierced her soul. She did not faint or swoon, she stood. She stood with strong composure. He had enough suffering of his own without her adding to his overflowing cup of sorrow. Wow. You know, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Okay, continuing on with this. Mary was a woman of pain. And I want to read you, oh gosh, one of my favorite, favorite passages. And this is for, for somebody today. It'll so, so, so bless you. Second Corinthians. Um, chapter 4 verse 8 we are hard-pressed on every side yet not crushed we are perplexed but not in despair we are persecuted but not forsaken we are struck down but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body remember life always comes out of death you know I love that thought in the place that he was crucified there was a garden remember unless a seed is planted continuing to read from second corinthians uh, chapter 4 verse 11 for we who live are always delivered to death for jesus sake that the life of jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh so then death is working in us but life in you wow and then this is the best um verse 16 therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward person is perishing don't we know it well <laughs> yet the inward man or woman is being renewed day by day how great is that you're being renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory oh it's just a moment it's just a moment hang in there always too soon to quit while we do not look at the things which are seen stop looking around with your natural eyes but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Wow, that's a great word for us. You know, just those of us who had prodigals, it was, it's a, such a pain, painful thing to watch your child go through life with a heartache. You just wanna just, let me just take that pain from you. So hard to watch so good to know God loves them more than we do but again God makes no mistakes we might think at this point when we see why is Jesus having to die why is this happening you know why Mary might have thought why did I ever say yes if I would have known I would have never have, have done this this is just too painful what was I thinking but here is a great comfort God often uses people greatly after they've been broken know that poem I'm gonna say it next time whom he uses greatly he bruises greatly broken people minister to broken people but if you've suffered greatly let me tell you that God is going to give you a ministry God will not waste your sorrow you know it takes your, your misery and gives you a ministry it takes your sorrow and he'll turn it into a song he'll take your mess and give you a message and your test for a testimony let me repeat that again your misery for a ministry your sorrow into a song. In fact, those those that have written profound songs or written profound poetry um, have suffered greatly. The man that wrote It Is Well With My Soul lost his daughters at sea. Can you imagine? And we'll talk about that again, but just wow. And your test for a testimony. How great is that? Broken hearts minister to broken hearts. 
Um, if you sow in tears, you're going to reap in joy. What a promise is that? You sow in tears, you're going to reap in joy. Um, and I'm thinking about the man that wrote The Hound of Heaven. Oh my goodness, probably one of the greatest pieces of literature ever um, written. Look it up. But I love the last page. And this man was an opiate addict. He was um, depressed, ready to take his life on drugs. And I love what he wrote. He said, oh, God is talking to him. First of all, he says, do you see anybody else chasing after you? Because he's so annoyed that God keeps chasing after him. God, would you stop it? Stop following me. <laughs> but then he asks, do you see anybody else chasing after you? Do you see anybody else who loves you that much? And he realizes, no, I'm, I'm alone. Only God. I love that. He said, all which I took for, oh, I hope I can remember it by heart. All which this child's mistakes fancies as lost, I have stored for you at home. In other words, everything you thought that I took from you, oh no, I didn't take it for your harm. I took it that you would seek it in my arms. I'll give you an illustration. When I used to give my granddaughter a little a box of Cheerios, which she loved, she'd be off and see you, see you, Bima, see you later. But if I gave her just a little bag of Cheerios, guess what? She had to come back every two minutes to get more. And you know what? That's why God doesn't give us everything. We'd be like, see you, God, I'm fine. <laughs> but it makes us, when he takes things from us, parents, loved ones, maybe a marriage that has gone bad or a prodigal, um, God, why are you doing this? He's like, I've got them, and you have to come to me if you want to see them. Isn't that just how it works? But, oh, that is such a great thought. This man, he realized, God, you love me so much. Everything I'm looking for is in you, God. But if you sow in tears, you're going to reap in joy. Jesus is near the brokenhearted. You're brokenhearted today? Jesus is right there by you. And your pain has a purpose. You know, as that man could sing who lost his daughters, it is well with my soul. Look up that hymn today. Maybe I'll quote it next week. But <sighs> your pain has a purpose. And just think, Jesus took all your pain. That's why he died on the cross, took your sin. He did not, he wants you pain free. <laughs> he took all your pain. Nobody suffered more than Jesus. And he understands. So you can, you know how you sometimes, you, you know, you're going through a trial and you know nobody's going to understand what you're going through. Not even your best friend, not even people that you love. And it's like, you know, God understands. Jesus understands. Go to him. Oh, the uh, peace we often forfeit. Oh, the needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So I hope that blesses you. But there's going to be good next week <laughs> coming out of Mary's pain. Okay? God bless you.